Hello chess lovers, Soren here and in this video we are going to cover two games. The reason is that both these two games have a lot in common, that's the reason that in this video you will see two games. The first game was played by the 6th women's world chess champion Nona Goprindashvili against German chess player Rudolf Servati in 1974 in Dortmund. And the second game was played by Michael Tal against Thomas Petz in 1974 in Halle. Let's first cover the game played by Gaprin Dashvili and then we will take a look at Michael Tal's game. In this game Gaprin Dashvili opened up with e4 and Servati responded with Sicilian defense c5, knight f3, knight c6, d4, c takes d4, knight takes d4 and g6. Black goes for accelerated dragon, against which Gaprin Dashvili set the Marozzi bind. C4 is on the board. Bishop g7, bishop e3, knight f6, knight c3, and knight g4. By placing the kingside knight on g4, Black is inviting white to capture on g4, after which is winning the knight on d4. And after queen d1 is playing e5 and is earning a pretty nice outpost for the knight. Here comes knight b5. Yes, white instantly wants to get rid of this powerful knight on d4. And at the same time, right now the threat is knight d6 check. That's why Servat castled kingside and we have bishop e2. Queen h4. Black is coming after the pawn on e4. We have knight takes d4, e takes d4, bishop takes d4 and in return we have queen takes e4. Bishop takes g7 and a terrible mistake by Servati, queen takes g2, which steps into a brutal combination. Instead of queen takes g2, it was better to recapture with the king. Although after castling king's side, white has a more preferable position, but of course all in all there is nothing wrong with black's position. But in our game after bishop takes g7 we have queen takes g2. And as we have reached the critical position you can pause the video and try to find Goprin Dashvili's next moves. Ready? Well as you can see right now the rook on h1 is hanging. But in here the 6th women's world chess champion played queen d4 and sacrificed her rook on h1. Moreover she is allowing Belek to win that rook with a check. Queen takes h1 check is on the board and king d2. This time white is sacrificing her second rook. Queen takes a1 and believe it or not but in here after queen f6 black resigned. Since there is no satisfactory defense to bishop h6. For example if we move like d6 then white can play bishop h6 and black king is in a mating net. Of course by giving away his queen Black can prolong his resistance, but still there is that queen g7 threat and now if f6 then Black is also losing his rook on f8 and this is going to be an easy win for white. Several months later at the international tournament in Les Halles, a game between Michael Tal and Thomas Petz reached an identical position. Although by a transposition of moves, White against his will was forced to commit plagiarism. Let's see what happened in Tal's game. Up to move 11, we have the same moves as in Gaprin Dashvili's game. And in here, instead of playing bishop e2, Tal chose queen d2. Here, Pets played queen e7. He's coming after the pawn on e4. Bishop e2 b6, knight takes d4, e takes d4, bishop takes d4 and queen takes e4, which is a mistake. Instead of playing queen takes e4, it was better to play bishop takes d4 and then play bishop b7 and now if f3 then f5. And for the sacrificed pawn, Black has a very nice counterplay. Of course, you can't capture on f5 because of this rook e8. But in our game, after bishop takes d4, we have queen takes e4. Tal captured on g7, queen takes g2, and queen d4. Yes, Mikhail Tal follows Gaprin Dashvili's path. Queen takes h1 check was played with king d2. Actually, we have the same position as in Gaprin Dashvili's game. Although in that game the pawn stood on b7. But of course this pawn can't make sense. 
And in here, instead of accepting the second rook sacrifice, Pets played queen takes h2, but even this move won't help black. Here, Tal captured on f8, and after king takes f8, we have bishop f3. Tal is both attacking black's queenside rook and at the same time is opening up the e file for the rook. Now, if rook b8, then rook e1 can be very unpleasant. The threat is queen h8 checkmate. That's why Bullock gave away his d pawn and only after bishop takes d5 played rook b8, but anyways we have rook e1 and the threat is queen a8 checkmate. Bishop e6 was played a desperate move, but in here Tal made a move and Bullock resigned. Can you find Mikhail Tal's next move? Ready? Well, he simply captured on e6 with the rook and Bullock resigned. Now if king g8 then rook e7, this is an easy win, white is a piece up and a very dangerous attack and if a move like f takes e6 then black king can even get checkmate hit. A very impressive checkmate, right? And here is what Mikhail Tal jokingly wrote in the Latvian magazine Chess. I owe a sincere debt of gratitude to the women's world champion for her active participation in my appearance at Les Halles. Thanks for watching, if you enjoyed both these games give the thumbs up, for more games consider subscribing to my channel, also press the bell button to get notified about new uploads, I will see you in my next video, take care!